bus. I'm in Melbourne, which is Liechtenstein's premium skiing location. It's got three big slopes for skiing enthusiasts. No slopes are open today because it's the summer. It's off peak and there's no snow on the mountains this time of year. But one of the ski lifts is open. So you can get the ski lift to the top and have a look at some of the views. That's what I plan to do. You can possibly see the ski lift moving behind me. I'm going to catch the ski lift up and then I'm going to hike down. Well here we go, I'm on the ski lift and I'm heading to the top. steps now to get a little bit higher. It's a lot warmer than I thought up here, although it may be that the sun's now starting to come through the clouds. This is what you call a mountain pathway. Uh, yeah, wow. If you listen carefully, you can hear the bells that are ringing from the cows in the fields. This is looking out towards Austria. So I'm pretty fortunate to be standing here with the Austrian Alps behind me and the Liechtenstein Alps in front of me. It's, uh, it's quite a remarkable place to be. Still hear those cowbells. Incredible. There's the ski lodge right at the beginning of two treks. So if you want to take that five hour, pretty advanced long hike that I was talking about on the way up, you basically follow this path to about here, and then you work your way up these mountains here. You follow the top of the mountain, you go right the way round, look over that peak, which apparently gives some phenomenal 360 degree panoramas, you walk along the mountains here and then you come down, wind your way back into Melbourne. That's pretty incredible but that's about a five, five and a half hour hike, the guy said. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down this path, I'm going to head up here and I'm going to probably go no further than about there to get some views into Austria some views back into Liechtenstein, then I'll come back down and then I'll wind my way down the side of the mountain all the way into the village at the bottom. You can see back there is the ski lift or the top of the ski lift about there somewhere so that's where I started walking followed this advanced five and a half hour hiking trek I'm about an hour and a little bit into it I guess I've been stopping quite a bit and taking photos there's another really large peak there might be able to see a cross on top of that actually so I'm not sure why wow, that's there. There's the largest peak. That is probably about two, two and a half hours from where I am now. It's all uphill as well. And that's where I'm going to end up with a little bit of luck. So I just wanted to give you some context as to where I am. This is a map of Liechtenstein. Uh, started out this morning down here in Vaduz. This is Switzerland down here. Austria's up uh, towards the top of the map. 
I uh, traveled over these mountains through a few tunnels and that's where I got off the bus Melbourne you can see just about this red line first of all this black line here is the ski lift which came from the bottom to the top of this particular mountain I've then walked along about to here I think I'm probably about there um, looking down at Melbourne and Austria as you saw just a few seconds ago just to give you some context as well this huge peak right there is the Panjulkopf which is 2,859 meters high I'm now at the first cross and I'm at the highest peak I'm going to hike to today there are three plaques at the foot of this particular cross had a look at them, one from 2007, one from 1982 and the other from 1951 not exactly sure why this is here whether there was accidents that have happened here over the years but uh, an absolutely stunning view of the Austrian Alps and a little town in the valley just below me and as I turn around this is the path I would take should I continue here we go right to the top first of all to the peak there which you may be able to see has got a cross on it also and then you'd walk I mean it looks really small it doesn't look very far on the video screen here but that is an incredible distance I could actually see people on top of that middle peak there I can just about make them out like ants and there's also another cross up on the top of this mountain here that's the big one beautiful panoramic views all around me you could spend weeks in this area just doing various hikes and looking at lots of all the, all the different villages and towns and also love to see this place in the winter but it doesn't look like this, I bet it's completely covered in snow. I am not going that way, as I said, I am now heading back down into the valley and I'm hoping not to that's where I've just come from of course I'm hoping not to have to follow my footsteps all the way back down because there's this little tiny pathway here and I've got a feeling that I'm walking in a little pathway created by a stream there's nothing in it at the moment in terms of water anyway there's plenty of stones and it looks like the bottom of uh, what a stream would appear like but it is going to save me quite a bit of time and it seems quite safe so I'm going to try it I'm making some good progress not far now until I reach the proper path which is there in coming down here now for about 15 20 minutes it's extremely steep but it's not too steep so you know, if you lose your footing or fall, you're not going to come tumbling down it. But uh, probably about as steep as you'd want it to be. And I've made it to the footpath. This is where I wanted to get to. Should be a bit more straightforward now to get down. The wonders of modern technology. I've just checked Google and it tells me that a bus is going to be leaving in about 30 minutes from Melbourne going back to Vaduce so I'm going to try and catch that one I'm uh, hopefully about 20-25 minutes from reaching the bus stop so it should work out pretty much spot on I 
made it back down into the centre of town. I'm very close to the bus station, so I'm going to be catching the bus in about five or ten minutes. And the rest of today is going to be spent, well most of it anyway, is going to be spent travelling. I'm uh, now heading back to Vaduz, which is going to be about 30, 40 minute bus journey. When I get there I've got to pick the luggage up, head to Sargans, which is another 30, 40 minute bus journey. And then from Sargans I've already booked a train that's going to take me from Sargans in Switzerland to Basel in Switzerland. But right now I'm going to go and catch that bus before it leaves, without me. About 3.45 this afternoon I was in Melbourne over in Liechtenstein and I was just about to catch a bus to catch another bus to catch a train and all of that. Well all of it's done, I've arrived at the Motel 1 in Basel, it's as I say about 9 o'clock at night, I've had something to eat already so I think I'm going to go out the hotel, have a quick look around the main city centre and just see what it looks like so I can familiarise myself with the area and then spend tomorrow having a proper touristy look around. to 11. I'm pretty tired after all that hiking and walking today so I'm going to head back to the hotel and get a good night's sleep before hitting Basel tomorrow. 